Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, we get to have one of the most fun types of conversations for this show, which is new features. Yes, today we get to go away from policy and regulations and societal issues and just focus on the really cool things that AI is letting us do. The first story around those lines is that after months of anticipation, OpenAI has finally started rolling out its much anticipated voice mode. Now, voice was shown off back in May, but pretty soon OpenAI said that it wasn't quite ready for prime time yet and they just weren't comfortable releasing it in the state that it was in. Of course, you also might remember that event for the controversy it generated around having a voice that sounded to many like Scarlett Johansson from her, but that hasn't stopped people from wanting to get their hands on it. As The Verge points out, at OpenAI's event, the new voice mode appeared to be noticeably more capable than ChatGPT's current voice mode. On stage, OpenAI employees were able to interrupt and ask the chatbot to tell a story in different ways, and the chatbot took their interruptions in stride to adjust its responses. Part of the delay, it appears, was that OpenAI involved more external red teamers during the extended month to try to release a version that is more safe. OpenAI says that they've also, quote, added new filters that will recognize and block certain requests to generate music or other copyrighted audio. So right now, the advanced voice mode is slowly rolling out to paying ChatGPT Plus users. And even within that, it's only a smaller subset that have access. OpenAI said that users in this alpha test will receive an email with instructions as well as a message in their mobile app. And while the rollout has started... It seems like it's not going to be particularly aggressive. OpenAI writes, we'll continue to add more people on a rolling basis and plan for everyone on Plus to have access in the fall. Importantly, this also does not include the video and screen sharing capabilities that were also shown off at that event back in May. Still, the first reviews are rolling in. Manuel Sainsilly writes, it feels like FaceTiming a super knowledgeable friend, which in this case was super helpful, reassuring us with our new kitten. It can answer questions in real time and use the camera as input too. Another example from the same person, was real-time Japanese translation with an original Pokemon Nintendo game. I have access to this amazing Pokemon Yellow original Japanese version, but I can't really speak Japanese, so could you help me translate the text? That's awesome. I love to help with translations. Go ahead and show me the text, and we'll work through it together. This is the classic Professor Oak introduction. He sang, hello there. Welcome to the world of Pokemon. Ready for your adventure? Professor Oak is ready to guide you through your journey. Cristiano Giardina says, It's very fast. There's virtually no latency from when you stop speaking to when it responds. When you ask it to make noises, it always has the voice perform the noises with funny results. It can do accents, but when speaking another language, it always has an American accent. And then he shares a video of ChatGPT acting as a soccer match commentator. Hey, I want you to act like a sports commentator commentating a soccer match. And I want you to really get into it and scream when a goal is scored and uh, get really excited. All right, folks, we're in the final minutes of this intense match. The home team is pushing forward, passing with precision. The striker's got the ball. He's weaving through the defense. He shoots. Goal! So you can see the emotion modulation is something that makes this more advanced than other voice platforms than we've seen before. Aaron Tang says, ChatGPT's low latency plus interruption voice is awesome. I'll be relearning Cantonese soon to make my mom happy. OpenAI is helping all relearn so much at any speed. I think translation is likely to be the thing that people try first, as it's one of the most obvious and potentially game-changing uses of this feature. Anyways, I will be keeping track to see whether I get this email, and even in advance of getting access myself, I will also be keeping an eye out for what people are doing with it. Next up, we move over to a Midjourney update. Midjourney has just released version 6.1. Now, this is Midjourney's first update in quite a while. Version 6 came back around the beginning of the year. While it's been less than 24 hours, a lot of people are really impressed so far. So here's how Midjourney describes what's new in version 6.1. More coherent images, i.e. arms, legs, hands, bodies, plants, animals, etc., much better image quality with reduced pixel artifacts, enhanced textures, skin, 8-bit retro, etc., more precise, detailed, and correct small image features, new upscalers with much better image and texture quality, roughly 25% faster for standard image jobs, improved text accuracy, which is obviously a big one. This is an area where, for some time, Dolly 3 has been out a little bit ahead of Midjourney, so it'll be interesting to see where they catch up. And they say things should look, quote, generally more beautiful across the board. Now, interestingly, they say that even though it took them around six months to get this version 6.1 model out, they think they'll be releasing a version 6.2 in the next month or so. 
There are also some features that are not available yet in version 6.1, specifically in painting and outpainting. So if you are using their zoom, reframe, repaint, or vary region features, it falls back automatically to the version 6.0 model. Initial reflections for the community validate a lot of what Midjourney had to say. Nick St. Pierre writes, version 6.1 upscalers are so much better. Wow. Tatiana Sigaliva did a comparison of a macro close-up shot of an eye, and while version 6 is great, version 6.1 feels nearly indistinguishable from photography. Although I'm sure that's what we'll say again when we see version 6.2, and it's even better. Other people are already putting this into a new pipeline. Everett World, for example, took advantage of Runway's newly launched Gen 3 image-to-video features, with images provided by Midjourney v6.1. Others are using Midjourney plus Luma for a similar pipeline, and overall the capacity for people to create with AI is just increasing by the day. Now, if you are interested in a deeper analysis of how Midjourney 6 compares to Midjourney 6.1, we will be posting something like that on Super Intelligent really soon. We're also in the final days of a summer promotion where we're offering an annual subscription to Super Intelligent for 50% off the already discounted rate, so just $96 for the year. If you sign up at bsuper.ai, you can use code YEAR50 to get that. In any case, I now am going to wrap this up so I can go play around with these tools. Appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.